welcome we continue the key concept and terminologies in this lecture we will primarily concern about the terminology related to risk risk assessment and then under risk assessment individual and societal risk then we will discuss about uh, the assessment process what is risk perception what is acceptable risk and another very important concept ptd prevention through design in addition i will try to cover one more important topic here that that is basically the in in detail what will be the safety engineering engineering and plus some touch of analytics related to safety so i hope that by uh, 40 minutes time we will be able to cover it otherwise let me try how much it is possible but to relate to my previous two lectures where the basic concepts and terminologies are discussed so you have seen that we started with some key definitions then uh, what i have given you i have given you hazard triangle and then the causal factors three levels causal factors one is at the hazard level then the level 2 where the system component and again at the level 3 the further breaking down into the failure modes failure mode this level and i also talked about safety domain ontology in safety domain ontology with reference to with reference to construction at uh, not construction working at height and there we relate this accident triangle uh, sorry i say that hazard triangle we will use the word hazard triangle not accident triangle hazard triangle and then under this i talked about also the risk control system rcs and hazard actuation hazard perceptions all those things you have you know actually you are now in a position to understand the key terms terminologies what safety engineers looking to do and how the hazard element to the accident path and what are the different measures that can be taken you do not know the specificity of those measures but you know the uh, in abstract level what are those things you know and in addition i told that with reference to rcs i told that leading and leading le leading and lagging indicators lagging indicators very important topic so now we will see little more concepts that under individual and societal risk and also there are different kind of uh, other issues and then what is prevention through design and what is in totality industrial safety engineering that is the topic. So, let us uh, see what is individual risk. Okay. What is individual risk IR? We will go by the definition of ICAM. A formal definition of individual risk is the frequency with which an individual within a specific group or population may be expected to sustain a given level of harm from the realization of specific hazards or particular combination of hazards ok so do you know what is risk yes by definition you know that risk is the quantification of hazard potential so what is the harm that the hazard contains and if the target is exposed to that harm the, the uh, that is what is the risk level for that target by individual risk we talk about 
target specific risk. For sake of simplicity, we will say that suppose people, people or human is the target. In that case, a person working for a particular job, what is the amount of risk he is exposed to? That is what is individual risk. An individual within a specific group or population may be expected to certain level of harm. So, R risk equal to probability time consequence. Probability means suppose let person working at height, person working at height. So, let us consider that working at height is the hazard element. What way he will meet an accident, fall from height? Fall from height is the accident. So, he can meet fall from height accident or because of system failures, system level failures. Mean suppose the 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 platform which is carrying that person, it may be deteriorated or he might have not used the safety belt, other things which are required to be used at, at that place particularly. So, all those initiative mechanism will lead to fall from height. So, then if the fall take place, then what will happen? The person may injured depending on the preventive measures. The injury may be at that level, he may he, he may succumb to death also fatality. So, pro probability of fall from height times if we consider that we are interested in fatality risk times the probability of fatality consequence or or simple consequence value, this will give you the risk value. A welding person is doing some kind of a, a welding in the machine shop, he is also subjected to some kind of risk. Okay. So, there can be electrocution. So, what is the probability? that he will be get into touch of electricity and then what will happen that two combination will give you individual risk. This is related to people. So, suppose hypothetically you consider that in your plant there are A, B, C, D, E, F, I, G 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 different locations people are exposed to, people are exposed to different locations. Suppose I draw the location chart here and I am drawing also like this. So, like this, okay, maybe this. So, in this way A to suppose this one is my J, 10 different locations are there. Someone working here someone working here, other person working here, are they exposed to same amount of risk? No. It all depends on many other factors. What amount of risk is exposed to depend on the what hazard elements, how the hazard element will be ultimately through different initiative mechanisms will lead to what kind of accidents and then then probability of that accident and if that accident what will happen to him, whether there is a cause, cause, case of near miss or there is a case of LTI or there is a case of fatality or there is a case of serious injury. So, all those things ultimately may be different from different places. So, as a result job wise also there will be difference. So, that is what we are talking under individual risk. So, as a result Suppose person working at A, B location or J location, they are not exposed to same amount of risk, this two high risk compared to others, this two and 
this to another group this also another group but can be same so we can say cluster risk cluster 1 risk cluster 2 and this is risk cluster 2 3 if i replace region by job then i say the job group a and b having same level of risk then c d e f g h having you know, same level of risk and i j same level of risk now you may be worried about that what is this ir that is the individual risk how do i quantify all these things for the time being i told you that this ir is p cross c probability now if i say it is job then you have to add this for eighth job what are the different hazard elements he may be exposed to different hazard elements there can be multiple paths for initiating mechanisms different paths for initiating mechanisms and finally there are different consequences also at this path one level at this and the three different all those all those this occurring of this the probability that path probability of this path probability of this path probability of this path probability of this path all those path ultimately will give you this ir and there will be some total so need not be that for a particular job or a particular locations that there will be equal number of paths it is not it is the safety engineer who who is designing this job or the designing this facility for pe people to work they must understand much before what it is and accordingly take action okay so those issues will be discussed little later for the time being individual risk means an individual exposed what amount of risk suppose i am working here at any point in time i may i i ha, i ha, i am exposed to risk at any point in time i may have some con may face some consequences so that is what is individual risk okay so but individual risk is not the only thing that the safety engineer should look into the societal risk is another very very important one because societal risk is more problematic one so okay whatever may be let's first you understand what is societal risk here societal risk is the frequency and number of frequency and number of people suffering a given level of harm from realization of a specific hazards that means we are not talking about individual we are talking about people with reference to suppose this is your plant this is your plant so there are different different locations here suppose three people so working here let it be 10 people working here maybe your 25 people working so they, that means if i say that what is the amount of risk for this location considering all group the total set all group of people or here considering these three people or here or collectively for the plant considering all employees together or you may go beyond this that the plant also create hazards or risk to other people who are basically out of the plant but within the society nearby so that's why the concept of societal risk it's basically we are not talking about individual we are talking about the group as a whole for example every day there is there is fatality in indian roads now when one people die in such conditions and when there is a suppose train accident many people dies so this even though the number of maybe the number of uh, people died in train and rail is less than number of people die in on roads but but the rail accident creates more um, awareness more uh, more concern to people so that means there are situations where many people will will face the problem so if you are the plant in charge you must know what are the what are the hazards that are specific to individual risk and what are the hazards that basically once occurs will create the uh, uh, i can the societal the group of people will be affected you must have this knowledge that's why this is important it is not that 
uh, important because group of people will be affected or individually will be affected some kind of contribution is because you must know the hazards which cause individual risk and which cause societal risk there will be hazard which cause societal risk that may cause individual risk it is quite likely. So, as a result when a society at large is more important than individual of course. So, we basically we basically create a curve called FN curve. What is FN curve that we will discuss later, but for the timing that this is a measure of societal risk not like the individual part what you have seen earlier. Here you see that 100 nuclear power plant early fatalities. So, this is risk, this one is air which one this this is basically explosion I think the second one this one is this one is what is this chlorine something and similarly then then total man made risk this one second one all crashes this one, but what is this why this kind of curve is coming here what is number of fatalities what is this annual frequency fatality is exceeding x. So, x or suppose my fatality number of fatality is this exceeding that fatality is. So, you see that this fatality here for this one it is much less, but if I consider this you go up you will find out this is the this is what is your dam failures I think. So, that means the corresponding probability is available. So, F n curve basically talks about that x or x or more failures what is the probability. You may be interested you may find that if there are one fatality it is may be fewer, but if there is 10 to the power minus 3 fatalities it may be acceptable. So, then you understand what is the probability in my plan that my fatality number of fatalities x equal to 10 to the power minus 3 which may be acceptable by the community. Okay. So, we during risk quantification time we will discuss how to calculate FN curve and how to compute the individual risk and other things. So, after risk assessment and understanding the individual and the societal risk, after understanding the hazards, after understanding that how the ultimately when hazard occurs the paths leading to accidents, you, you have to do one another important issue is called risk assessment, what is the value either individual risk or societal risk what is the value. So, that value will be further compared or evaluated either with certain acceptable standard or with benchmark risk or we with other uh, similar situation what kind of uh, risk is there and so that you can take actions. For what action? Risk mitigation actions, risk prevention actions. Okay. So, the that process is known as risk assessment process. Now, please understand what is this process. In this process you see one is hazard identification, then this is basically risk quantification. You must know the probability or frequency and the impact that is basically likelihood here probability mean likelihood impact then evaluate the risk. So, r equal to if this side give p this give c r equal to p cross c and there will be absolute risk major risk contributor comparison with other risk as I told you this one will be compared and you will get like this. So, there are this particular process one side is qualitative another side is quantitative. If you go by qualitative risk assessment, you will get qualitative rank, qualitative ranking. When you go for quantitative, you will be you will be get quantified benefits. Okay, so that means the what is the process of risk assessment? You have to first identify hazard. Then that hazard, how it contribute contribute to accident? 
then there will be model of causes which gives you the probability, there will be model of effects which gives you the impact or consequences and then these two multiplied gives you the risk and finally, this risk will be used for different purposes. Later on I will show you that risk prioritization, the how priority chart will be used for risk um, prioritization. Okay. But anyhow, risk assessment is important step, but at the same time please understand it is both qualitative as well as quantitative in nature. Suppose for industry people may be interested in qualitative ranking, but the, the fresh engineers, the student they may, may be more interested in quantitative assessment. Okay. So, we will see later on, but for the time being you understand there is a process called risk assessment its primary purpose is identification of hazards and how it leads to the different kind of accidents and then there will be there will be some model of causes and there will be some model to find out the effects the cause and effect will be multiplied and then you will get risk once you have the risk for different hazards there will be prioritization and there will be comparison that is what is known as risk evaluation and you can do it qualitatively as well as quantitatively quantity one is better, but it is it is as it is costly or time time consuming. So, for all large plant or all industrial perspective initially qualitative risk is done and then for safety critical events or safety critical uh, subsystems uh, that you can go for quantitative risk assessment not for all. When you when, when you develop risk ok. So, I can say when you basically either qualitatively or quantitatively you know the risk, then then what happen you rank it. So, so here some points are given, some activity and agents are given, motor vehicle, smoking, alcohol to nuclear power and you are a risk analyst. So, what you are seeing? that motor vehicle primarily accident on roads and nuclear power which is important one another one. So, these two what are the where is the place this one I have rotated from this Slovic at all. So, that mean motor vehicle risk is one rank is one high, highest level nuclear power 20th. Suppose, you are not a risk analyst, non risk analyst, what you will see? You will tell nuclear power is more risky compared to many others. So, the ranking you see it is the 20th to 1 first rank, what is this? This is perception. Okay. So, you cannot ignore this important, this is a psychological issue, you cannot ignore this. So, that is why when you come you identify the hazards leading to societal risk, they are what will happen? This gamma parameter plays a significant role because what happened in nuclear power accident not only a national phenomenon it is international issue. Similarly, you are a very good you, you, you are, your industry is extremely popular industry lot of people like your industry because it is a it is a brand one accident may lead to loss of reputation. So, that gamma factor the perception factor is extremely important. On road to the best of my knowledge every year in India there will be 130,000 fatalities that is what is happening on road of India. Okay, if you consider 130 crores people that is a different ball game altogether may be per, per million may be one fatalities. But please understand 
understand the amount of fatality is so high we tolerate this okay but we will not tolerate maybe a bridge failure killing 10 people so this concept is so important this is important for decision making ok another important concept alarp ok what is alarp alarp is as low as reasonably possible or practicable this is basically a guideline to understand the acceptable risk there are three regions region 1 region 2 and region 3 this is intolerable region when you identify risk quantify not identify quantify risk for your job for your location or for your plant as a whole whether the risk value falling here, falling here or falling falling here. So, this one is intolerable region, risk cannot be justified except in extraordinary circumstances. This is the tolerable region, the, this is the top one, this is the bottom one tolerable only if further risk reduction is impracticable and it is tolerable if cost of reduction exceeds improvement gain cost benefit and this one is the broadly acceptable regions which is necessary to maintain this one. One criteria may be that if your fatality risk is 10 to the power minus 4 means at any point in time or it is basically 10 to the power minus 6 or less in between value is uh, that is under tolerable region this is acceptable tolerable intolerable so once you identify the risk values quantify the risk values what will happen you put where it is falling and these figures 10 to the minus 4 10 to the minus 6 these are the criteria that this value must be means if 10 to the 4 people exposed then one fatality per 10 to the 4 people unacceptable, but per 10 to the 6 people it is acceptable. It is one such criteria I think uh, so far I know it is the Dutch criteria, but please keep in mind you can create your organization specific criteria. You may not accept this 10 to the, the it can be it may be you may say no no it should be 10 to the minus 6 and it should be 10 to the minus 8 or your case is such that that 10 to the power minus 3 but whatever you do if it is a fatality risk I will be always interested in the value of 0 0 fatality so that you create you identify all hazards find out their risk values then totally you create the alert matrix for this how many jobs falling under this category how many locations falling under this category very very important how many job is it so that 99 percent of your that all jobs are falling under this or it is 99.9993 percent is it what kind of process it is it is a six sigma process from safety point of view or it is a 3 sigma process or it is 12 sigma process. So, uh, do you have any idea? You have to find out all those things. I, I told you many things. I told you hazard, I told you hazard actuation, I told you state, state trans hazard transition what more I not I told you the causal factors I to, told you safety domain ontology to know the accident paths I, I, I have discussed individual risk I have discussed societal risk so many things 
we have discussed. So all those things, what is the need of knowing at the engineer, at the graduation level when you are in the in the engineering student student level? The primary reason is that when you design a product or a process, please keep that safety not during the design only, you safety of people, property, environment, entire life cycle of the of your design. During entire life cycle of your, of your design. So traditionally, what are the design steps? First one is your traditionally, first one is your that business concept idea. Then you will go for design, there will be preliminary design, detailed design, there are stages of design. Then this will be built and finally it will be under operation, maintenance go on and then decommissioning. Any plant will go through all those stages. The entire stage from business concept to the decommission is known as the system life cycle. What I am saying? system life cycle system slc system life cycle so you must understand as a designer safety engineer what are the hazards that may occur during operation and maintenance during decomposition decommissioning during build erection all those things must understand and during design all those hazards will be properly addressed. This concept is known as prevention through design. The prevention through design concept whatever you do in the <coughs> before design during design that, that ultimately not only helps you that ease of implementation, but also your cost of intervention, cost of intervention, this is basically ease of implementation, this is the cost of intervention, cost that is ease of intervention. So, your, your safety for the people at work, for the property, for the environment as a whole will be much better if you think all those things much before put into operation. So, you whatever you do within this design, these are prevention through design, otherwise redesign or retrofit and moving safety prevention to the upstream of life cycle that is the work of safety engineer. This subject is important because of this. Not because that uh, during operation some accident has taken place and you want to uh, analyze it and then say okay this has happened will it will not happen that is that is the last resort. You why you have not understood it during design you have to understand it. If you cannot understand then you cannot design for it and unfortunately we do not have any such training in the undergraduate level. How many colleges included that safety engineering as a important subject of their basic engineering structure? I am sorry, I do not know. So, this is very important. So, prevention through design. During design, you understand all hazards, you understand what are the initiating mechanism that may take place, you understand who are going to be affected and what is the amount of effect. That means, you must know what are the different accidents that take place. You must know that what are the risk barrier, risk prevention measures, risk control system will be in place. So, that ultimately accident will be prevented. Mitigation is also required, prevention may not be successful all the time because there is a probability concept. Okay. But we want zero accident, our concept also should be zero accident. Now, in under industry 
industry 4.0 Hmm. Zero accident. This is very very important. So what are you doing? Are you thinking that okay, one day accident will take place? Dekha jayega. So you should not, you should not wait for accident to happen. You must do prevention through design. The this particular subject. will help you in understanding the hazards hazard actuation different techniques for hazard identification risk quantification blueprint for prevention and all those things together with qualitative and quantitative methodologies techniques okay so this is what is the concept i will i will end this lecture now the concept part just i want to tell you what are the take homes for you one is from concept point of view you understand the basic terms what are the basic terms one is hazard second one is accident or mishap third one is risk minimum basic terms hazard accident and risk you have understood hazard triangle with hazard element initiating mechanisms and target and threat you now know that the hazard triangle will give you accident paths through safety domain ontology you know that there is concept all prevention and mitigation measures under risk control systems there are many risk control systems starting from maybe maintain inspection and maintenance plan design competency of work all those things you know that that there are causes of accidents because accidents is not a one factor phenomena it a multiple factors are together under risk control system we also discuss leading and lagging indicators you must identify what is leading and lagging indicators okay we also discuss under risk assessment that what are the, the risk assessment process obviously in the conceptual level not quantitative way risk assessment process then i talk under risk assessment individual risk then societal risk and risk perception risk perception we are also inter uh, interested to know that whether do all those things we will be doing when it is needed no you must know what is the life cycle of a system and all those things that hazards how it will happen ultimately all those things you must understand in the prevention through design stage which is basically under be, 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 de, under design build during build during erection during installation then or during operation and maintenance during decommissioning or other way i can say disposal every activities must be thought of in the design stage and and the total risk in the risk con life cycle of a system must be understood and prevention or mit and mitigation must be put into perspective through safety protection measures different safety protection measures the early you do the better is the result the reason it will be easy for implementation it will cost will be less so safety engineering under prevention through design is understand everything before at the de design stage incorporate 
all protective possible protective measures the design stage so that people at large when they are at the workplace they will not get into they will not meet into any accident thank you very much